Thank you very much everybody for joining us this afternoon. My name is Mithun Desarkar. I'm a clinical dietitian and a nutritionist. I have been in Northwest Clinic for the last 11 years, but I have an experience of 20 years and more. <laughs> Doesn't look like, right? <laughs> well, my expertise and my area of interest is polycystic ovarian syndrome, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, cholesterol, anything, any chronic condition that requires nutrition intervention is what is my specialty. And along with this, I have to work closely with two specialists. That's an endocrinologist and a gynecologist. We are very blessed that we now have a gynecologist in Northwest Clinic. She is Dr. Sadia. Welcome Dr. Sadia to Northwest Clinic. Really feeling blessed because she's my neighbor. <laughs> and we, I keep running to her for so many questions I have regarding my patients because I'm very inquisitive when it comes to women's bodies and women's health. Dr. Sadia. Thank you so much. Thank you for the kind introduction. I must say, I'm so pleased to be in Northwest Clinic also. I recently joined this clinic. So I'm Dr. Sadia Malik. I'm a consultant gynecologist, and I've been doing this for more than 25 years. I was in the NHS UK for 14 years, but for the last seven years, I have been in Cornish Hospital, where I was a consultant gynecologist. Only recently, I have moved to sunny Dubai uh, to join Northwest Clinic in my own practice. Uh, so yes, polycystic ovaries is also very close to my heart. Sadly, as Mithun would agree, this is one of the most commonest endocrinological disorders which is suffered by the women of the 21st century. So today we want to sit together and do some myth busting around it and hopefully answer all your questions that will come by the end of the session. So Dr. Savia, uh, you won't believe, I mean, of course, one out of five women or two out of 10 women have PCOS nowadays, right? But I'm talking about my practice. If I'm seeing 10 women patients in a day, Six or seven out of them have PCOS. And many of them live in denial, they don't even know about it. So when I'm assessing them and I'm looking at their signs and symptoms, and when I tell them I'm suspecting that you may have metabolic syndrome, you have insulin resistance, they, they, they fall from the sky, they've never heard about it. And, and honestly, uh, sometimes it's difficult to make them understand that you may have something like this. Asha, many times it happens, uh, when I'm assessing them, they would say, I had polycystic ovaries five years ago, now I'm fine. And I fail to make them understand, you can never be fine, it's not a curable disease. I want you to tell the audience, what exactly is PCOS? What is this syndrome all about? There is so much confusion around it, and it's, it's PCOS Awareness Month today, September is PCOS Awareness Month, and that's why we're doing this talk today, this chat today, so that we can make you aware of what this disease is all about. I'm, I'm really glad you mentioned about the diagnosis and the signs and symptoms. Uh, because yes, uh, there's both sides of the coin. There would be somebody who is full-blown PCOS, we just have to look at them as, as health caregivers, and we would know and, and uh, know that unfortunately they have the syndrome, or there would be people who would be wrongly diagnosed to have PCOS and they, they haven't got it. So my first message through this webinar is that you have to see healthcare professionals who are very sure as to how to diagnose PCOS. So as you rightly said, yeah. signs, symptoms, and investigations. So according to all the guidelines, you have to have two out of the three of these. That means if you are coming with the symptoms of doctor, I can't lose weight. Doctor, I've tried all the diets and I'm still not losing weight. Or I've got excessive facial hair. Or that I've got like, I cannot, I'm unable to have a baby. So if you have those symptoms, uh, then we will look at signs and we will do certain investigations to come to a diagnosis. And once a diagnosis is confirmed, then unfortunately, this is a lifelong diagnosis with implications with every decade of your life. So sadly, it doesn't go away, but positively, it can be managed. And it can absolutely be managed. And the mainstay of the management is a healthy diet and good lifestyle choices. And that's why I am sitting with a clinical dietitian because this would be my first go-to advice every time I confirm the diagnosis is you, you need to see a dietitian to help you manage these symptoms. Thank you so much, doctor. You, you're so right about this because gone are the days when, uh, you know, when you went to a dietitian, it was all about I'm overweight, 
check your height, check your weight, check your BMI, and give a diet to lose weight. Okay. It used to be like, okay, you're eating four, four uh, pieces of bread, have two. If you're having uh, 200 grams of chicken, okay, make it 100 grams. If you're having three spoons of uh, sugar in your tea, make it like one spoon. So just reducing portions or cutting down calories blindly is never the solution. I don't know about others, but this is not how I practice. For me, I'm very inquisitive and curious to know your diagnosis. So hence, when somebody comes with all these signs and symptoms, I want to know the root cause of your problem. I don't want to give you a diet or a nutrition plan just on the basis of guesswork. So my, my patients always, I insist that you have to get your, uh, you know, I, I want to know your, your blood sugar levels. I want to know your lipids. I want to know if you're fat, if you have fatty liver condition. And, and if, you, uh, if your signs and symptoms match, I want to know if you have uh, metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, polycystic ovarian syndrome, because then the diet can be customized as per your requirement. It's not a gender diet. Sometimes women come to me with preconceived notions my sister-in-law is doing a keto diet, my colleague is doing a keto diet, my so-and-so followed a certain diet when I was doing Atkins, and I want to do the same. I said, you've come to the wrong person then. Okay, it's my responsibility, you have come to me to heal up. It's my responsibility to give you the right customized diet or healthy eating plan. And it just doesn't revolve around eating these foods. You also have to eat it at the right time. Absolutely. What is your mental state when you're eating? How is your sleep hygiene? Every time I notice sleep has become, is no more a priority, isn't it? Not at all. You, you, you feel you've worked so hard and I have to now some, spend some time unwinding so you're in front of your social media or television, compromising on your sleep, sleeping at two in the morning, you have to wake up at five in the morning, feeling depressed later that why did I spend so much time in front of the social media, your emotional health, everything comes. There's a full counseling that goes in and it's not just about the food that you're eating. And you need to stop having these notions that keto is the right diet for me or cutting off carbs entirely is right for me or I need to go off dairy or I need to go off gluten. Everybody's not the same. We need to manage your symptoms based on what is your problem and then come to a conclusion. Then the healing happens and the inflammation reduces and you start noticing the difference in how your weight loss happens. It's not Weight gain is a symptom of an unhealthy body. Okay. Let us not judge you by saying that, oh, you've been so lazy. You've been stuffing on burgers and that's why you're overweight. That's maybe not the case. And how frustrating it is for you when somebody says that. Sometimes a family member is saying that to you. Let's understand the root cause of, of your problem and then like the diet. Yeah. And I'm so glad that uh, being a dietitian, you're mentioning uh, the, the lifestyle. You yeah. know, So it's just not that, uh, as Nathan said, just reduce this or take this. Most important thing that the 21st century women are facing is the lifestyle. Because why did our mothers didn't have it? Why is it a current problem? This is because the reflection of what we are doing. If you will move away from the circadian rhythm, night is for sleeping and day is for waking up. This is a big scientific fact today that we are going to tell you. <laughs> so if you are going to uh, uh, not believe that and say, no, I'm going to test my body by being awake the whole night and sleeping in the daytime, then every action has got a reaction. Some people are lucky that they can do whatever they want to and their body doesn't react negatively. But if you are diagnosed to be a PCOS, I'm afraid you have to go back to the nature and, and have these healthy choices, which your body is uh, wants really. But like Dr. Sadia said, some people may not see the reaction now, but they will see it later. There is no way that if you've been having not sleeping at night and sleeping in the morning and going against the circadian rhythm, you're bound to see later how your lipids go up. You're bound to see how your hormones go out of whack. And um, though we follow a very holistic approach of having the right nutrition, changing our lifestyle, sleeping well, exercising, not taking stress, having positive thoughts, sometimes if your markers have been really high and they're off the charts, mm -hmm. You cannot deny medication. Sometimes I've noticed, Dr. Xavier, that some of my patients, they are they're very hesitant mm -hmm. about taking certain medications. So let's say their insulin uh, numbers have come really high. They, they try and somewhere, you know, like run away from taking medications. I understand their fear perhaps, but I think the biggest fear comes around birth control pills. Yes. I have so many patients, like 16 year old girls, 17 year old girls, they come with their mothers. We diagnose they have PCOS. And they say that the doctor has advised her birth control pills. And obviously there's a resistance and fear around it. Unfortunately also, these girls don't go for follow-ups. Yeah. 
and then they end up taking those birth control pills for as long as possible. And then when they are in their 20s, mid 20s, they get married, planning to have children, fertility is a big concern. I wanted to highlight why are doctors giving birth control pills? I, I personally also want to know about that. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm really glad you, you touched on that topic, especially now that we're sitting in the, in the Middle East. I, I find that especially this that this resistance is more in the Middle Eastern countries and also in the Southeastern uh, cultures. So what, the first thing you have to know is that birth control pills are not just birth control pills. That's one of their functions. They are basically hormones. Yeah. So we are prescribing them in a condition where there is hormone imbalance. Mm -hmm. So to help the hormone imbalance, of course, we have to come from outside and give some hormones to help get rid of the imbalance that the little girl is suffering. So that's why uh, uh, giving birth control pills is one of the mainstay of our treatment. Yeah. And I want to reassure mothers that believe me, as we speak, not one million, one billion women are taking the birth control pills. So if there was a horrific side effect associated with it, we would be knowing about it and we would be telling. Of course, with every prescription of birth control pills, believe me, we have our guidelines. Mm -hmm. So it's not like paracetamol that we would just give. Yeah. There is a list of things. If we have checked all those boxes and we believe that uh, giving birth control pills is a good idea, then it is a good idea. And it does. it, it is one of the main things, especially for the teenagers. Totally, totally. And there's one more point I want to add for the teenagers. Like you are uh, commenting on the birth control pills, I want to comment on something that I get this teenager dragged in by her very, very, very nervous mother saying, doctor, she has got PCOS, okay? And I'm looking at her, she doesn't look PCOS. Yeah. The poor girl is sitting there, so I'm fine. Because some doctor, sadly, has done a scan mm -hmm. for her, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And they put the probe on the tummy yeah. and said, there you go, there are so many cysts, cysts in this cysts thing. Though, yes. okay. Now, two things about cysts, if, if you can take it away from this webinar, we think we've done a good job. <laughs> True. If you want to have a scan of your teenager, I will give you a formula. Uh, tell me the date of when she started her period. So at nine, she started her period, add eight to that. Now, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. By international law, she should not have a scan of her ovaries yes. eight years since her first day of her last period, yes. first day of her first period, yeah. yes? Because in those eight years, the ovary is a developing ovary. Yeah. And still with all this research, we still really don't know what a developing ovary looks like your developing ovary will be different to your neighbor's developing ovary. So we have decided as gynecologists that we are not going to put a picture for that and we are not going to scan any child eight years from her last, from her first period. So this is one thing that moms yourself should tell the doctor, no doctor, she doesn't need a scan because she's not yet eight years, number one. Yeah. But at the same time, yes, she might not have the cyst or you might not have scanned her, but she still could have the polycystic ovaries. Yes. Because polycystic ovaries is not associated with having cysts or not. It's a metabolic syndrome of the body. So that is why we are mentioning other signs, symptoms, and investigations that would, yes, confirm that she has polycystic or refute that she hasn't got polycystic. I no. cannot reiterate enough how important is prevention. If the child is showing these signs and symptoms, how important it is for parents to consider this, that she might be polycystic mm -hmm. ovary. So let's take care of her nutrition and her lifestyle right away. The child is sedentary, sitting in front of the television. You're giving, giving in to her demands of having sugar, processed sugar, Nutella and chocolates, ordering in the burgers and fries, giving in because otherwise she's not eating anything else. So prevention in the sense, you as parents also should start imbibing these uh, habits, having good family table manners, eating right foods, nutritious foods, lots of green leafy vegetables, fruits, vegetables, no elimination, but just choosing right, clean, healthy foods. All these things have to start from home. It cannot be that you are not following these principles, but forcing your child to follow these principles. And remember one thing, follow-up is so important. Don't just disappear just because nothing has happened, right? Every three months, six months, one year, go see your gynae, go see your specialist, go see your dietitian, because these follow-ups are so important. I get so many times these patients who have not seen, who have PCOS, 
and haven't seen their gynex for five years and continuing to take metformin or the birth control pills constantly because they feel this is my way of life and live with it. Mm -hmm. Who knows, you probably are in a better spot or you're in a worse spot. Maybe it has affected your thyroid condition or any other organs for that matter. Get yourself checked. Exactly. Because as the age moves, the whole paradigm shifts. Everything shifts as you move into your different blocks. I always say 20 to 25, 25 to 30, yes. 30 to 35. Yes, yes. All these little blocks of life have got something different <laughs> to offer, which you cannot fathom if you are trying to solve, solve this uh, uh, on your own. And I'm glad that you mentioned the, the diet for the kids because um, uh, I'm, thankfully my kids have grown up and they are no longer teenagers, but it is a big, big challenge for, for parents. It's PCOS or no PCOS, you know, if you have the problems of overweight and being obese yeah. at, as a teenager, it is a big problem. It has to be sorted with that. So, so yes, definitely genetics plays a huge role. You're predisposed to PCOS if you, if you, if you, it's the genetics play a, a lot, a, rather a very large role. But I would also say environmentally, you can, you can manage your symptoms. If, if you are going to continue eating processed sugar, junk food, processed food, foods that are sitting on the shelf for a year or two means the kind of preservatives, the kind of uh, chemicals that have been added to these packed foods, you are bringing this upon yourself. It's not that you're responsible for your PCOS, but you can actually do something for your own self by focusing and paying, uh, paying a lot of attention to these important factors. So we now we come to, as you mentioned, that these women uh, have been taking these tablets and now they've got married or they want to plan a baby yeah. and now they would come to you saying I can't get pregnant <laughs> so you know uh, fertility is a huge issue but mm. I, I have certain things that I'm very you know I just want people listening to us understand do not make PCOS a life sentence of saying I can't have a baby because I've got PCOS mm. Please understand that fertility, there's nothing in my dictionary called infertility until we actually chop your ovaries out and chop the testes out. That's infertility. Yeah. For me, something there is something called subfertility and there's something called superfertility. So if you are a PCOS patient and you're unable to get pregnant, then your diagnosis is subfertility due to PCOS. Now, what I really don't want to see is that the partner sitting casually with the, with his uh, wife and uh, saying, yes, she's got PCOS and that's why she is not getting pregnant. Now, hang on. If there is a bit of subfertility involved with PCOS, then the partner's super fertility with his good healthy diet, good lifestyle, no smoking, no shisha, and, and, and working with the environment can give him super fertility with his sperms, which can actually help his wife to get pregnant. So the first question always for me is, let's do a semen analysis, because this is the guideline that whatever reason a couple is coming, I haven't come to PCOS, all I know is this couple is, is uh, struggling to get pregnant, we need to do a semen analysis and you can find many surprises over that. True, true. I totally understand what you're saying because I get a lot of women who come to me, obviously they want a fertility life. Mm -hmm. They want to improve their fertility. I always tell them, bring your husband along. I want to understand his diet, his lifestyle. Is he a smoker? Is he drinking a lot of alcohol? Or is he even a passive smoker for that matter? Exactly. What are his stress levels like? How is his sleep routine? Is he exercising at all? Is he lifting weights? Is he into strength training? You know, all these factors are very important. Okay. Let's not just blame the woman and her PCOS condition. So when we're talking of fertility, if we are talking about saying things like try to eat foods that are as organic as possible, the pesticides can be endocrine disruptors in the foods. I'm not saying that it should be 100% organic. Maybe it's not possible nowadays, but at least whatever you can, certain fruits and vegetables, certain grains, can be, be mindful, be mindful, mindful. can be uh, organic, trying to focus on foods that are rich in zinc, like oysters, having seafood, having omega-3 fish oils in the form of supplements, as well as having the right kind of foods like salmon, uh, tuna, mackerel, sardines, having a vitamin D, exposing yourself, go out in the sun, get some natural vitamin D, your skin needs to absorb some vitamin D, we're always, though we live in a bright city, we're not exposing ourselves no, in our bad condition. No, everybody no. is deficient in vitamin E that plays a huge role. We need to get a good quality folates. I'm sure the doctors are advising folic acid, 
but you also need to take it from good sources, from green leafy vegetables, spinach, kale, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, having high antioxidant foods coming from your berries, resveratrol, getting your strawberries, having peaches, plums, uh, having a lycopene like in your tomatoes, in your watermelon, squash, pumpkin. These are the kind of natural foods that you need to consume versus having constantly processed, white, refined proteins and parathas. I'm not against carbohydrates. I'm just saying make your right selection of carbohydrates. Have low GI, which is low glycemic index foods, so that there is not a, there is no spike of insulin and, and, and glucose. So you have to be very wary and watchful in each, and the man has to take equal responsibility. Yes. It cannot be just the woman. Unfortunately, she has PCOS, but you, like you were saying the other day to me, 50% is his responsibility. Yes, we have to tell the audience this amazing uh, uh, scientific fact that 50% of the baby is actually made by the man. <laughs> Which is true, right? <laughs> so that's why we have to you know, shoulder that responsibility equally. But you know what, Nathan, I'm, I'm sure we will check the questions coming through, but I can hear some through my mind. <laughs> I can hear a, a, a group of women saying, do you know what? I've had pumpkins and peaches up to here. <laughs> I've, I've done all my research and, I'm, I, and I've done my night sleeping and everything and doctor, I'm not getting pregnant. Okay. And this is a really, really stressful, yeah. stressful situation and we are absolutely, we understand. And of course, for that, it's not possible that we give you all the advice in the webinar because yeah. it is a very, very individualized management from here onwards. The message that we are giving is that you cannot hide behind, I've got PCOS, I can't have a baby. That's wrong. That's the myth we have to bust. And the few things that I want to mention regarding fertility is that, yes, there is a time factor to the ovaries. So if you are uh, coming to your late 30s, early 40s, and you have, you have got PCOS, then there is a time factor where we will do certain things and advise certain things, which we are not advising the other population that we were just talking about. So first of all, is that you have to take the active form of folic acid because if you're PCOS, then the, the MTHFR pathway is disturbed. So just go to any shop and leave it. They will give you active form of folic acid, not the normal folic acid. You can buy it off the counter. That is one thing. If we as gynecologists are prescribing you metformin or other drugs to help, then do take them because we want you to get better very quickly. And then regarding obesity, if unfortunately you are morbidly obese, that means your, your BMI is more than 40 and you are coming to your late 30s, then in that time, I will take this extra mile to say that we have to consider bariatric surgery also if you are morbidly obese. As you can see, in the last half hour, we haven't at all mentioned that, but I've kind of taken only this group because if you've tried everything and we are looking at the time clock, then we have to do certain things different uh, to really, really help you uh, do, do all of that. But we do the semen analysis before, before we do anything. So I think we are ready to take questions from you people if you have any questions, any doubts. Though this was a very general topic, we might come back next month again with um, topics that you are interested in. You can always write to us and tell us uh, what are the topics that interest you? And we could probably elaborate on certain topics uh, each time every month. Um, Dr. Sadia, any questions do we have? Yes, oh my God. Okay, let's start. And so uh, I, was, I was ready for this. Inositol or metform? Inositol or metformin? <laughs> so first of all, you know, medications, I know you're, you're, you've heard this so many times. Medications are not a quick fix that put me on metformin, put me on inositol, and I'll get clean and I'll get a baby. As you, you see, you, you heard that we are talking about a diet and healthy lifestyle is the mainstay. I would go for metformin if you have severe endocrinological uh, abnormalities in your blood tests and insulin resistance. I think metformin is helpful for more research that is coming into metformin, it's only good. But again, we would individualize. So as a general answer, I would say yes. In terms of when it comes to inositol, we are talking about fertility here. So you cannot just take a tablet and say, I'm taking inositol metformin, I will get pregnant. Well, there are so many other factors for a pregnancy that wouldn't have been addressed. So I don't want to say, do this and you'll get pregnant. You do this and you're not getting pregnant, put a timeline to it and, and then say, 
if I still don't get pregnant, what next? So that's why you will need specific fertility experts. And mm -hmm. I would even say not even a gynecologist. If you're not getting pregnant, you have to go to a fertility expert yeah. and you have to have that you know, demarcation as to who is deciding my, uh, my, my pregnancy, whether it is not happening or not. Uh, do you, Amrita, do you have a diet plan for PCOS? So let's understand something. There is no specific PCOS diet, okay? It's a misconception if you've seen it on Facebook or Instagram or any other social media platform, somebody saying I have I'm a PCOS diet. There's nothing like that. There's nothing standardized. It's very customized. You and your symptoms in front of me and we will work around what is sustainable for you, what is possible for you, because we want this to be long-term. It's not a two months or three months diet, right? It's not that you're doing something for two months or three months. It's a lifelong journey. So we have to see what works for you. And yes, that can be your PCOS diet, okay? So yes, then in that case, we have a PCOS diet. Then the other question is, uh, what, uh, how do I know if my doctor is giving the right treatment? Always, you see, uh, with PCOS, you work as a team. Yes. So when you're asking, is my doctor giving the right treatment? The doctor will be saying, are you following all the things that I have had advice? So one way of looking at it is if the doctor prescribes you any medicine and whatever the aim of, of success was, because remember, PCOS hasn't got a cure. So what, how I deal with PCOS is I ask you, so please tell me what is the main problem that you have? If you have acne, I will deal with acne. If you have weight gain, I will deal with weight gain. If you are unable to conceive, I will deal with that. Because uh, with PCOS, I don't have a cure for the disease. I will help you with that. So I will give you medicine for that. And if you achieve that, that's great. That means the medicine was right. With you doing all the things that, that the doctor had, had suggested you to do. Majorly the problem is patients don't comply too well. And, and I always tell my patients, please, Pick your specialist. You need to have one gynecologist. You don't go around hopping to different gynecologists and taking so many opinions. You have one endocrinologist. You have one dietitian. That's what it is. Once you work as a team, you also have to comply. We also have to support. So you have to work as a team. Follow-ups are extremely important, which I keep reiterating. Come every three months. Let us see. Let us assess how you're feeling. And then results are bound to happen. Then you're bound to get your results. But it's how you comply is more important than our treatment, I feel. And, and absolutely, you know, embrace the situation. As I, as I said, I, know, I, I, I love this quote and I always uh, write this down that, you know, a PCOS is just a part of your life, but it should become your life. Mm -hmm. So once you know and understand your problem, you will be in a better position to, to deal with it. Now, there is, a, there is a question that, you know, uh, doctor, I was taking metformin and I didn't conceive. Unfortunately, I, I can give you so many stories, and these are real stories where you've seen a PCOS patient labeled PCOS for five to six years, tried every medicine, but the husband's semen analysis was not, or not done, and he was a smoker, <coughs> so severe asthenia teratozuspermia, which is a very, very common, a common diagnosis that we have. So you would you know, so this is what we are trying to say is that it's a couple treatment if it is for the baby. Yeah. The next question uh, takes me to something more serious, which we thought we will discuss at the end. Uh, that somebody is saying that I've been diagnosed to have endometrial polyps and I don't need a baby. I'm beyond that time. So this would lead me to the three most important things, what we call, as we've been calling it a lifelong a problem, which you are at risk of. So one of them is becoming diabetic. Okay, so if you're less than 40, you're not yet diabetic. As you age beyond 40, unfortunately, you will be diagnosed with PCOS, you are at high risk of becoming diabetic. But you will not become one if you, your BMI is become, will be within the normal limits. The second thing is increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Again, you can beat that by keeping your BMI in the normal limit and being healthy. But the third one is that because of the effect of extra estrogens, because this is the problem with the PCOS, that you make extra a bad estrogen from the subcutaneous tissue, from the extra fats. This bad estrogen then goes and attacks your uterus. Yes. And, the, and what it does to the uterus is it builds up 
a very thick lining in the in the lining of the uterus, which then kind of bleeds at all times. That's why people come and say, uh, my periods are irregular and all of that are, are very heavy. Either I don't have a period or when it comes, it's, it's like a big, big, big period. So that is when uh, the lining is thickening and we call it polyps, mm -hmm. or it can keep thickening and thickening. And if you, as Nitin said, don't see the dermatologist regularly, I'm afraid there is a small chance of it becoming nasty. Yes. So if that is the case, you need to come and see a gynecologist. We will do the scan for you, tell you whether it's a polyp or thickening and what we need to do next for it. Yes, perfect. Um, so any questions you have from uh, from from your there are some more questions that are popping up i guess okay uh hey is hsg compulsory before starting the fertility treatment i guess this is another one that uh you know people uh, are catching you to tell hsg is serosalpingography which is a radiological test to check the patency of your tubes now, why should your tubes get blocked? Your tubes get blocked 99% because you developed a pelvic inflammatory disease, a pelvic infection. And believe me, you would know in your history if you would say, doctor, in the past, I've had many infections or I have had recurrent infections in the past. So now you are at risk of developing pelvic inflammatory disease, which will block your tubes, which will then stop you from getting pregnant. So if that is not the case, why are we checking your tubes? So the answer to your question is that yes, HST is one of the tests when we want to check fertility, but no way it is on the top of the list. No way. On the top of the list remains husband semen analysis. I think you'll be repeating that a few times. <laughs> in this webinar, which is much easier, cheaper, and less painful, before we then turn all the guns towards the lady to start doing invasive, painful, expensive tests. That's my take on yeah, it. We're not feminists here. We're just no, stating no. facts. No, 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 no. These, these are facts. These are absolutely <laughs> facts. Um, mm -hmm. Most of my, my, um, my comments, that uh, they are all evidence-based. They are according to the ESHRI guidelines, which is the European Society Guidelines of Human Reproduction and Endocrinology. Google it. These are the guidelines that you're talking about. We are discussing Professor Adam, Adam Balin. He is one of the biggest names in PCOS, and I'm, I'm absolutely honored to listen to his lectures, to learn from him. And then there's another very important website, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, certainly. Verity? Verity. Verity. Yes. Verity.org. It's a charity, charity website. It's charity website. Okay. So honestly, it's, it will be great because it talks less in the in the very medical vernacular. It talks in your language. And I can show you that it is evidence-based. So it's not some crazy lady sitting and typing away what she feels about PCOS. This organization is <laughs> there. I, I like the way you said it's not some yeah, crazy because lady. There are some, uh, there are some uh, crazy ladies who do. Who do, uh, do, do you have some questions on the left? I, what oh, OK. Uh, which specialist is the best to follow if you are diagnosed with PCOS and insulin disease? Endocrinology, diagnosis, dietitian. All three. <laughs> All three. But you see, again, as I said, address your problem. So if you're 45 and you don't need a baby and your periods are regular and you've seen a gynecologist one, once, um, that's fine. But if you have got insulin disorder, then of course the endocrinologist has to take it away from you. The dietitian is part of you all through your life. And there's another point I just remembered, and I'm glad there's a question to that also, is the thin PCOS. Mm. You know, when you're sitting there saying, uh, hang on, I'm, uh, I'm at PCOS, I've been diagnosed with PCOS, my weight is absolutely fine. Should I need to see a clinical dietitian? Believe me, yes. Yes. The reason is that at any point, if you are a true polycystic, it's going to catch up on you. Totally. And your age is changing. Every day you're not the same age. So you can sit here in the comfort of being a thin PCOS today. If you are not listening to all these things that we are saying, then it can catch up on you very quickly. 
So you still need to follow all the dietary advice that the film members. This metabolic syndrome will follow, mm -hmm. even if you are thin. It's not about your BMI when it comes mm -hmm. to, of course, it plays a huge role, but if you're thin, you don't have the license to eat all that you want, going up to McDonald's, having the soft tea, having the burgers, having the fries, having the jar of Nutella. Yeah, you might be thin, thankfully, but you will still have most of the symptoms. And so, so there's a very, uh, a doctor uh, has asked a question in case as to what tests that we have to do. Again, you have to look at what is the question? You know, this doctor is doing all the tests mm -hmm. and then looking, never do a test if it's not answering a question. question yeah. So what is your question when you are asking, uh, asking yourself? So let's start from the teenagers. You've got a teenager who you have is coming with you saying irregular periods, hair growth, and you can really see that in looking at her that there is some uh, signs of excessive testosterone activity in her. So of course you're going to do your testosterone, SHBG, free testosterone, all of those that has, along with the FSH, LH ratios and everything. But we don't need to look into the fertility of this poor child. Yes. But once she is sitting there saying, doctor, I've been trying to get pregnant for so many years, I can't get pregnant. Immediately the, the fertility uh, switches on and then you will do all the blood tests, including the husband blood tests, to think about the fertility. So all the blood tests are the general ones, but those which answer your question for her current problem. That's how I would, I would answer that. Absolutely. And when we're looking at weight loss, uh, with PCOS, one a few tests that I also ordered is I want to know your vitamin D levels. I want to know your B12, your ferritin levels. Because all these things, all these deficiencies can impact your weight. So having the right amount of supplements or having foods that are rich in these nutrients can open your metabolic pathways, can improve your weight loss, can improve all your symptoms. So for us, for me, I'm very interested to know your blood sugar levels. Are you diabetic? Are you insulin resistant? Do you have, if, is your, is your triglyceride very, very high? How are your cholesterol? How is your cholesterol looking? Is your liver fatty? Mm -hmm. uh, do you have uric acid if you've shown symptoms? Is your uric acid high? Because then in that case, I have to give you a low purine diet as well. You know, so all those factors, only if it is related and you need it, that's when the tests are ordered. It is not that it's ordered out of uh, our whim or fancy. It's, it's necessary, that's what we're ordering. And all these tests, as you can imagine, higher the BMI, more we are worried about all these things, isn't it? So the cholesterol, the all the tests. Are, so the higher the BMI, unfortunately, we are more concerned, and we don't have to wait for forty to have all the cardiovascular risks because, unfortunately, the BMI is high. And if you are morbidly obese, and that's why I highlighted morbid morbid obesity because, unfortunately, it affects your heart more so than than anything else. So that's why we need to know and and identify your risks and quantify your risks according to the blood test results as to what we got. And then we have a baseline test to know that uh, our, our, our management is successful and all the, all the tests are causing yes, looking absolutely. better and better. Um, so they want to ask that whether we have online consultations or treatment. I think what we will yeah. do is we can, we can have a live um, session next time in which we will not do the talking. You will ask the question and we can just we can do, do that. Consultation. But otherwise, yeah. we are doing online consultations. If they don't want to come yeah. to the clinic, yeah. we have access where they can. Um, we can do online consultations. A link is sent to them and we can do our Zoom meets. We can ask them all the necessary relevant questions. Then we can order the tests. They can get the test done, come later and get the test tested. All that can be done. It's, it's possible, definitely. And, and if you trust some lab outside, if you're not in the UAE and they want to get them, yeah. whatever tests we advise, you can get them done and then give us the results. And uh, gosh, these are Corona times. We've learned so much about online yeah. uh, uh, you know, medications and all to of that. To be honest, it doesn't matter to us where you get the test done from, mm -hmm. as long as we get our figures and the, the lab test reports. We are able to treat you, and we can uh, we can uh, uh, do this. Uh, another thing, you know, when we uh, we mentioned uh, the uh, exercise and everything, I uh, because I work a lot with as I said, it's a multidisciplinary team. I cannot sit here and say I'm a gynecologist and I will manage this. 
I need all my team around me. Uh, and so one of the uh, person is also the, the people who are who help to do exercises and the, and the trainers. And I've learned two tricks from them. And one of them is that, you know, those deep rapid exhalation kind of yeah. uh, uh, movement, they, they, they advise that to build your core muscles. Yeah. Because your core muscles are around where the ovaries are. Uh -huh. So they always say that that is also yes. very helpful. And the butterfly pose. So today, Google what a butterfly pose is. It's, I'm sure many of you are practicing yoga. And what she just mentioned is all poses in yoga that we can yeah, use yeah. and also pilates is very good for uh, women with polycystic ovarian syndrome mm -hmm. i also tell my patients that go for uh, long walks mm -hmm. so low intensity long duration also helps it's not just about overworking out sometimes women spend two hours three hours in the gym and uh, overworking that's also not good because your body will be producing a lot of cortisol eventually which will also produce extra amount of insulin, which is, again, that's when you will notice all the abdominal fat. And you're burning yourself out. You, are, you, you have something called as adrenal fatigue. Why would you want to do something that your body doesn't want and you're forcing itself, forcing your body, I mean, and, and, and uh, you know, in the quest to lose weight, yeah. uh, you know, going through so much mm -hmm. suffering. You have to listen to your body what works. It works differently for everyone. This is one thing you need to remember. And you ladies are not PCOS sufferers. You are PCOS warriors. You're fighting this condition. And everyone is unique. You need to remember that. Do not compare your condition with anybody else. Don't let anybody judge you. You are not lazy. You are not cheating on your diet. You're not overeating. Don't let anybody tell you that, that you are overweight because you're lazy. You have a condition, face it, accept it, but take responsibility, work towards it. If you don't take responsibility, nobody else can. So if you look into that bit of your own life, self-care is a huge part of wellness. Give yourself time, work on your thoughts, manifest the right things. It's so, so important. Your mental health is so important. So we wish you all the best actually. We will probably end the session here today. Just one, one we have more questions. Oh, great. Question. great. Somebody great. says, we, I'm 34 years too late to have a baby. My God, you're a baby yourself. Yeah. This, this thing about your, you are, your prime fertility is at 36, 37. That's your prime fertility. Yes, it does go down afterwards, but 34 is your prime fertility. If you're not getting pregnant, please see a fertility expert to help you to get better. Yes. That's one thing. And the last thing is, which is very, again, I'm very passionate about is please take prenatal vitamins before you get pregnant. So people are asking me how long to take them. If you're planning a baby, you whether PCOS or not, you need to take prenatal vitamins. And out of that, folic acid is the most important. And in my practice, because I deal a lot of work in unfortunately recurrent pregnancy losses, so I've literally changed my practice and I give everyone the active folate. Yeah. Because I don't know whether you are the person who changes the non-active folate to folate in your body. I, the, those tests are too expensive for me. Uh, to do and unnecessary because what I'm going to do is advise you to take the active form of folic acid and you have to take it minimum of three months before you get pregnant please three periods before you get pregnant I call it the engagement gift you get yeah. engaged you start taking your folic yeah acid. exactly and then your nutrition program to improve your fertility also starts six months in advance and this should not be like a job you know like yeah. I see couples coming with so much stress Having a baby should not feel like a job. Just enjoy the process. Eat the right foods together. Enjoy a good lifestyle change together. Go for walks together. Cherish memories. Go for, you know, like talk to talk each other versus sitting other. in front of the screen or no, in front no. of us. Stay away from radiations. So, all these things matter so much. And it's it's collectively, it's not just a woman's responsibility here again. Both of you collectively work towards your fertility. So, yes, Doctor, do we have any more questions? No, that's it. I think, I think that's it. Doctor, what will be your closing lines for our audience? Look after yourself. That's the best <laughs> line that I'm, I'm taking from you. And never, never say never and never just say, I've been, don't take this as a lifelong, you know, curse or a diagnosis. Things change, life changes, age changes, medication changes. Uh, find, find a group of people who would love to help you. 
come at point <clears throat> best we would love to help you we are a group of people sitting here who would love to help you yeah. uh, so come and see us we'll be very happy to welcome you here and whatever address the problem that don't don't look at the whole picture address the problem that you have and that is what we will we will focus on also perfect thank you so much so next month stay put we will definitely come back with a new topic and we'll discuss on that topic and i hope you get a lot of valuable information thank you thank you bye